What's up guys, welcome to the Hand of Glory. So this is a brand new um, point-click adventure slash, slash detective game. The story looks pretty good uh, and it's pretty long for a puzzle, um, for a point-click adventure game. This is uh, consists of like two parts. The first part is out and the second one I think is supposed to be coming out um, later this year. Uh, and the, the part one itself is about, you know, almost 10 hours. So we've got a lot of work to do. I did play this for about five minutes just to see how see how it is, make sure I like it, and I do. This story begins where many others generally end. At the time, I worked for a detective agency known as HPD, but I couldn't know then what the acronym really meant. I don't think I ever really knew. All right, November 10th, outskirts of Miami. For a few months, I'd been on the trail of the man, the press, not very originally renamed Blowtorch. Blowtorch. A clue led me to the extreme outskirts of Miami, in a little out-of-the-way suburb that smelled like rotten fish. <laughs> this guy looks like Sherlock Holmes. Oh, dressed like him anyway. That's funny. Operator, the color you have dialed is unavailable. Do you want to leave a message? Bundy, knock it off. Judging from the traffic noise, I'd say you disobeyed my orders. Hey, I just went out for a ride on my bike. What's the harm? At 10 in the evening, I told you to stay home. The case is ours. We're already racing to the scene of the tip-off. But the Calvary's already here, boss. Let me find one of those clues that Blowtorch left for me, and we will stop the next murder before you even divorce your third wife. I'm on my fourth, Bundy, and I will never understand why that killer keeps leaving clues just for you. Do you need to ask? Because I'm his arch enemy, his nemesis, his worst nightmare. More like he enjoys leaving you every time grasping a handful of air. Oh yeah. Remind me again, old man. Who stopped the Puerto Rican surgeon and the arsonist of the southeast coast? And what about the... All old news, Bundy. You haven't caught a break for a long time, and for months you've been following Blowtorch without any results. Why don't you go on holiday and let us do the work? I'm in Miami, dude. Working here is a holiday. I'm serious, Lars. Give it up. Listen, boss. I will limit myself to a stealth approach. Identify the victim's flat. I write everything down. I smoke a cigarette. I admire the skyline. I wait for reinforcements. No shootout planned. That would be difficult, since you never carry a gun with you. Well, once a chick told me that the weapon at my side makes me clumsy. Don't cause any shit, Bundy. We'll be there in a short while. Okay. That means I have a short while to solve this case. What did you say? Nothing. Bundy, don't screw things up, or I swear... <sighs> at previous crime scenes, we always found a letter addressed to me, abandoned in the mailboxes. This time, maybe. I would be able to find that letter before the crime was committed, but I had to hurry. All right, welcome to Hand of Glory. In this game, you will investigate a tough case, but you will be able to do using a um, few simple commands. Let's see together how. Cursor, depending on the appearance, the cursor will help you understand the actions you can take. Clicking on a specific spot on the ground, Lars will move towards it. Try clicking with the left mouse button anywhere in the scene, okay? Alright, the magnifying glass allows you to analyze objects in your immediate surroundings. In this case, you'll achieve the same result with both left and the right mouse buttons. A horrible antique coin eater. Uh, the red cursor shows the ability to interact with an element in an environment according to the scheme. Left mouse button interaction, right mouse button examine. Interact with a green dart flask to proceed. Maybe there was still something useful in green dart's flask. Normally I would have filled it with scotch, but I didn't want to find myself in Orlando investigating a red whale again. Like last time. Hey. There really was some scotch after all. Scotch tape, uh, I mean. Alright, so I got a tape. Sounds like 
You just acquired your first object, the things you pick up are stored in the inventory which you can take, you can make, appear by moving the cursor towards the upper part of the screen. I see. Okay, so we got notebook badge, cell, no, 1990s Nokia cell phone, so I'm assuming this is 1990s. Uh, and a sketch tape now. Oh, he's going on the cell phone using the red mouse button, okay. Contacts, messages. Always remember to examine the objects you pick up for clues or new interfaces helpful in your investigation. Your trusty cell phone will come in handy on more than one occasion. From time to time, Lars will write down notes in his notebook, which is useful to keep track of current quests. You can access the notebook by clicking on it in the inventory or pressing N on your keyboard. Okay, notebook. I need to search the mail... what? I need to search the mailboxes for an abandoned envelope. Alright, uh, so this is, these are mailboxes. And actually we already have a puzzle here. Um, I looked at the various mailboxes and found what I was looking for. An abandoned envelope with no writing or stamps. The only problem remaining was how to open the mailbox. Maybe using something thin for leverage. The items you are carrying can be used with the objects in the scene. Open an inventory, click on the item, move the cursor over the object you want to interact with and click again. Try to pry open the mailboxes with an item in your possession. Okay. It was equipped with a normal lock. Very easy to destroy with a minimum of sheer force. Nevertheless, it was impossible to do it with my bare hands. Maybe using something thin for leverage. Alright, so I'm gonna try to open it with a badge. My badge wasn't exactly the right tool to wedge this open with, but it was worth a try. The only thing I accomplished was jamming the badge into the narrow crack above the mailbox. Okay, so that the is stuck now. So jammed that it didn't move an inch. All right, so this is one of the puzzles I was able to solve for five, ten minutes. I was playing this game, and that was it. So you have to crack Here's this what ground. The money was being used for. Several times. The conditions of that. Oops. A stone bigger than the others just fell off the sidewalk, and who was I not to accept the kind gifts from Providence? All right, we got a rock. So now I'm gonna try to hit the um, hit the, the small box with so the rock. That it didn't move an inch. All right, rock mailbox. The way it was stuck, the badge would act as a chisel. As usual, the letter was ripped and written with invisible ink. With scotch tape, I would be able to easily reassemble it. Well, I'd have to think about the invisible ink later. You'll be able to combine some of the items you will pick up. Open the inventory and use the scotch tape with the letter scraps. Or vice versa. Okay, so... Scotch tape. Put this, I would have stuck put this the letter together. Tape in the back of the letter, so as to obtain the best readability. I always hated puzzles. All right, so this looks like a. Wait a minute. This looks like a corner. No, it's not a corner. Uh, can I twist it? Can I turn it? No. Okay, so it looks like we just gotta keep adding stuff to this one. Yeah. Um. If I have to waste time on this. Okay, this is not that bad at all. I hate this stuff. Once I received a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle as a present, I sold it to my nephew. <sighs> All right, that was easy. It wasn't as difficult as I feared. At that point, I just had to find a way to read the message hidden in the letter. Well, I remembered that to reveal invisible ink, you just have to warm it. Where could I find a source of heat that late at night? 
Have you found the Hotspot Finder system already? Hotspot Finder? Click on the mouse wheel or the spacebar to show all the scenes hotspots. This, that is to say, the objects with which you can interact. Okay. Oh, I see. It's very cool. Okay, so what am I looking for again? I forgot. The letter must be resembled. Then I need to warm it warm it to show the hidden message. Okay, how do I warm it up? Uh, what else is here? Vending machine? Low gate? Maybe I put it in my motorcycle's engine? I don't know. Let's try it. Green Dart didn't have an engine to heat up, so I had to do all the work, as always. My Green Dart. A little engineering jewel made in Italy. Okay, so, um, let's try to interact with some stuff here. I couldn't buzz the whole building without a clue. <laughs> what about the smiley face? Someone left a stupid smiley on the intercom. Can I, should I buzz that? I couldn't buzz the whole building without a clue. Nope. All right, let's go back. How do I go back? There we go. Uh, what about this vending machine? That stuff tasted like chewing gum stuck under a desk for a month. I know that because at school I never had the money for snacks, so I picked up those. Ace Frizzo's vending machine. The worst cola ever tasted by a human being. The engine was working, though. Although the machine wasn't active anymore, I could sense its warmth. Okay, that's a clue. So, the machine is warm, and we need a sense of heat. So, we're gonna try to use this letter on the, the vending, vending machine. machine's yeah. engine emitted a faint heat. Maybe intense enough to show the hidden writing on the letter. And first, nothing happened. I was about to give up when it happened. The first characters appeared. The letter corresponded in every way with the ones found before. Supportive tone, an apparent desire to support the police force, then laced with a sudden temper tantrum hinting at a killing frenzy. I had to dig into this, looking for clues. Okay. To the kind attention of Detective Bundy, that's me. I'm deeply disappointed, Detective, by the incompetence with which you are dealing with the case of the fanatic killer known as Blowtorch. As a citizen and regular taxpayer, I'm worried about my safety so much that I decided to help you gather your... I don't know, votes maybe? Um... Blowtorch's tone ranged from disappointment to encouragement, with a barely concealed desire for recognition. Blowtorch's tone... Alright. What do we know about him then? He's made... He's male, of course, just between us. A sissy couldn't create a similar masterpiece, right? Did you see the accuracy with which the eyes of that poor girl were extracted from their sockets without corruption? The flesh... I don't know what the last word is. Uh, with a blowtorch, but for Christ's sake... The leads, this leads one to assume a certain craftsmanship. Is he an artist? Maybe part painter? As in my last letter, I suggest a plumber. Nobody ever thinks of the, of the plumber with all this obsession over butlers. And now we know his initials. I think that would be enough for a detective with a reputation high as a skyscraper like you. Finally, I'm a normal citizen and a regular tax pair. Blowtorch's tone. Okay, so... The forensic guys had no doubt about the gender of the killer just after the first murder. The reason for their certainty wasn't the accuracy of the burns, so much as the various bruises found on the bodies, which displayed extraordinary force. The usual outburst in the middle of a letter that until then seemed thoughtful and balanced. Then I saw the emoticon at the end of the paragraph. That was new. I guess Blowtorch tried to be funny at times. The only result being to appear even creepier. The last paragraph was surely hiding a clue. The murderer was even directing us to a specific profession. 
The initials in the last paragraph were found in the previous letter, but they were too vague a clue to narrow down the scope of the investigation. The initials in the last... Okay, so Plummer, right? That's all we really know from here. The usual closing format. Blowtorch constantly described himself as a normal citizen and a regular taxpayer. I don't know why, but that format made me mad. All right. So now what? Let's check our notebook. I need to analyze the letter for clues. Okay, how do I do that? Um... I didn't understand how that could possibly help me. Ace Frizzo's vending machine. The engine was working though. Okay, so I thought I clicked on everything, no? The letters were always kindly addressed to me. The usual closing format. Bloat. I don't know why. The initials in the last paragraph were found in the previous letter. I guess Blowtorch tried the last. The usual outburst in the middle. Then I saw. I guess Blowtorch. The last. The forensic guys had no doubt. The reason. Blowtorch's tone range. Blowtorch's. The letters were always kindly addressed. Okay, I did click on everything. Oh, smiley face. Look at that. That. How did I miss that? Hmm. In his earlier letters, Blowtorch never left anything similar. I took a mental note. That smile left on the letter and the one on the intercom were identical, so I could rule out a simple coincidence. I had just identified the apartment I was looking for. Yep. So now we know what button to push on the intercom. The apartment was registered to a certain G. Glover. I hoped I got there in time. Looks like he's not dead yet. Yes, who is it? I'm Detective Bundy from HPD. If you don't mind, I need to ask you some questions. He didn't answer immediately. Moments of total silence passed, during which I thought he had hung up. Sorry for the hesitation, but I really don't understand what you would want from me. I'm just a normal citizen who... Yes, of course. But I really need, and I mean really need, to talk to you. With a certain urgency, too. Can you open the front door? I hate to be a killjoy, but do you have a warrant? I don't want to get into trouble with my landlord. You know what? I guess I forgot it in my other hand. Anyway, I already told you that... Listen, the landlord is a real pain in the ass, and I don't want any trouble. If it's such a big deal, you won't have any problem coming back with a warrant. Good night. In my entire career, I had never been mistreated like that by someone I had to protect. Despite the fact that the guy was an idiot, I couldn't let him be killed in cold blood. Besides the front door, the only visible way in seemed to be the fire escape above. Alright, let's see what I wrote down. That... Uh, that idiot won't let me in. I could look for an alternate... Alternate access point. Okay. He said something about fire escape that ladder. ladder. would have been the perfect way in, but it was too far. The ladder was too high. I couldn't even see it from where I stood. Okay, so what can I do? What can I do? What else is here? That ladder would make a perfect way in, but how could I reach it? The door was one of those you could only open through an electric impulse. I wouldn't be able to force it open, even if it was a normal model. I've always been a washout as a burglar. 
Alright, so let's check out this gate, see if we can open it maybe somehow. Maybe in that alley, I would find alternative access to the building. Interesting. It didn't seem so high from the street. How did I end up up there? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. So now what? Even from the roof, I couldn't get to the fire escape. Seriously? From where I stood, I saw the lock that held the ladder in place. Okay, so wait a second. What if I throw a rock in there? In that moment, I thought of the hundreds of baseball games I'd seen while living in America, and I had a real moment of epiphany. The greatest champions in history were looking at me from the sky, cheering for me and waving their arms. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the newest member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, Lazarus Stonearm Bundy! Give it up for the only, the incomparable, Lazarus Bundy! Unbelievable. I get the ladder down. All right, so let's climb up. Lazarus Bunny in my place. Who'd have thought it? Oh, he knows who that is. Here's my man. All seven foot five of a man, to be exact. Well, so much the better. If things got out of hand, he could protect me. Lazarus Bunby, what are you doing? I still had some surprises in store for you. Ah, oh, instead, it's already time to put an end to our game. Is that him? Oh man. Just then, I knew I misunderstood the whole situation. Things went down dramatically. I had no gun, as always, and I had to deal with a mastodon ready to kill his next victim. Burton would surely arrive with backup shortly after. But, uh, how shortly? Moreover, we were convinced we had to protect the man who instead just revealed himself to be the monster we were hunting. I thought of sending a text to warn him, but I had no credit on my phone, having accidentally subscribed to a live weather service. I was in more danger than ever. But, at least I knew the weather was fine in Baltimore. One thing was for sure, I couldn't wait anymore. No, Alright, let's take a look. Uh, wait. He's in writing thing. Yes. No, Alright, so let's see. With bare hands, I would barely be able to tickle him. The beast was busy in a one-sided conversation. All he did was grumble. Apparently he became chatty only when it came time to write me letters. So let's see, what about this lamp? What can I, what can I reach? Oh, maybe I can hit him with the lamp. Trying to use the lamp as a makeshift weapon would have meant walking the entire length of the room twice. If I wanted to die, I could have found a more glorious method. Such as jumping out naked after drawing a target on my chest. No. Hmm. No, Cabron. Impossible. Interesting. What else is there? Mm -hmm. No, Cabron. So, what about the bottle? That beast towered over me. But a bottle in the right spot would put anyone to sleep. I had to hold my breath. The slightest noise would betray me. Never mind. 
Oh, that's not good. So now what? What the fuck? This doesn't look good for me at all. No way, am I dead really? Oh, I would die. Wait a minute. I don't get it. What the fuck? Alright, so maybe I need to escape somehow. I couldn't reach it in time. There we go. I told you to close that sewer hole, you slut. Ah, he's mean. If I hear even one more whisper, I'll be forced to use more brutal methods than usual. Is that clear? No. Okay, so now what? Now I can untie her, maybe? Freeing the girl was going to be way more difficult than that. Yes. What else can you do, Jude? Change the channel right now. I wanted to see how the movie ended. Yes. Trying to use the lamp as a makeshift weapon would have meant walking the entire length of the room twice. If I wanted to die, I could have found a more glorious method. So okay, fine, fine, fine. So, wait a minute. What about this bottle? I can't touch it anymore, right? Um... Hmm... The beast was busy in a one-sided conversation. All he did was grumble. Yes. Apparently he became chatty only when it came time to write me letters. Yes. Alright, what about this storage room? I just have gone from the frying pan into the fire. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't see a good reason to do that. Ah, what we have? What do we have? We don't have anything else. What can we do? Maybe I just need to go somewhere. Freeing the girl was good. She was gagged and strung up like a sausage. But above all, she was busty. Hmm. Uh, this further increased my desire to save her. The TV was silently showing a vintage spaghetti western. Okay, so what else? What else can I do? Yes. Call him he up. He already had his own, and I was short yes. on credit. The beast was busy in a one-sided conversation. All he did was grumble. Apparently he became chatty only when it came time to write me letters. Impossible. As always, I was out of credit. Could be. By that time, they were all using those uh, instant messaging programs. Therefore, my message box was constantly empty. I only had a game. The one with the snake that has to eat the dots all scattered all over the screen. I'll play that a lot. was complete rubbish at video games. Impossible. Let's see, alarm off. I had a pretty good idea of how to distract the threatening big guy. Oh, okay, so it has something to do with the alarm. Okay, I turned the alarm on. Impossible. He already had his own, and I was short on credit. No. Hmm. Better think about it. No. In that moment, it didn't seem to be a good solution to me. I was desperate yes. and in dire straits. I could do nothing but go for broke. What? He's got... Okay, what was the point of that? Look what you made me do, slut. First, I need to recover that damn phone that I still don't know how you managed to keep from me. Then, we'll settle up. Okay, so he went in there. Can I close him in there? Yeah, okay. F 
Fantastic. I like them in. Well, stay calm. I'll get you out of here in a split second. What? Blowtorch got a blowtorch. Seriously, that didn't work for me. <gasps> Hurry, run. I'll hold him. Okay, so what's happening now? So is that the same girl or not? I don't get it. Or did he take her anyway? Is this in the future? The Hand of Glory. Okay, so this is sort of like a beginning of the game, so I think I'm done with the tutorial. November 11th. Okay, so that's the next day, right? The blowtorch case didn't go as I hoped. Instead of the savior, I found myself impersonating the damsel in distress. Luckily, Burton came just in time to get me out of the doghouse. Okay, well, at least I'm alive. In contrast to his usual MO, blowtorch was about to take my head off with his bare hands. The signs on my neck would take weeks to disappear completely. I got suspended from the service indefinitely, obviously. And I would soon discover that sitting on my hands would never be a part of my life again. I found the Miami Harbinger under my door, as I had every day since I'd subscribed to their delivery service. I immediately saw the blurb on the front page. Blowtorch had been identified as David Ramos, an ordinary man who made a living working as a plumber. The initials, the plumbing job, Everything matched the information found in the letters. That crazy guy had given us, little by little, his complete identikit. Alright, so let's look at the picture. The leading story dealt with the disappearance of a young girl, the daughter of a certain Molesberg. Apparently he was one of the richest and most powerful men in the city. Nevertheless, I had never heard of him before. The journalist was doubting the real disappearance of the teenager, assuming she was a runaway instead. I wonder what clues she could have had that led to such speculation. Despite Burton's timely intervention, Ramos was able to disappear into the night and not get caught. At least now the public knew his real identity. The man would struggle to move freely. The leading story dealt with the disappearance of a young girl, the daughter of a certain Molesberg. Apparently, he was one of the richest and most powerful men in the city. Nevertheless, I had never heard of him before. The journalist was doubting the real disappearance of the teenager, assuming she was a runaway instead. I wonder what clues she could have had that led to such speculation. 
All right, I think we're done with this. We, well, what is this letter? The envelope sticking out didn't have a normal appearance. A cold shiver passed down my spine. And I just received yet another letter from Blowtorch. What? I immediately noticed the strange seal with which it had been secured, but I would think about that later. With a trembling hand, I set out to pull out the letter. On the paper was an address and a series of meaningless numbers. Nothing else. Ramos was giving me an appointment in a West Miami alley, but that wasn't the most absurd thing. The most absurd thing is that I'd probably have gone. So Ramos was back after just a few hours on the run, ready to pick up our challenge where it left off. In the meantime, the Miami Harbinger was publishing news about the disappearance of the Mosberg Scion that occurred the night before. What if she was the victim chosen by Blowtorch? I should seek out more information. The morning news was being aired right then. Maybe there was still time to catch the final minutes of it. All right, what? Wrote something in the notepad. I need more info, and the morning newscast should begin airing shortly. Before leaving home, I also need to retrieve my cell phone. Okay, so watch TV and um, find my cell phone somewhere. That TV had every possible function, including toasting bread, but not a bloody damn power button. I needed the remote control if I wanted to turn it on. All right, remote control. Um, yeah. Where's the remote control at? I don't see it anywhere, so maybe I left, I left it in bed? Bobby. Bobby was down there for a reason. To protect me from nightmares. I'd remove it only in case of extreme need. Bobby the bear, protector of my dreams. Lately he'd been slacking off, judging by the number of nightmares tormenting me. Alright, so that was Bobby. Uh, we're looking for remote. Nightstand, maybe? The cell phone was inside the nightstand. There we go. Comfortably resting in the underwear drawer. When I bent down to pick it up, I found myself looking at my parents' photograph. Mom and Dad, on holidays in Greece during their honeymoon. Dad with his typical sly look. Mom with an unlikely 80s rock star hairstyle. <laughs> we always used to make fun of her for that juvenile look. How long had it been since I left Italy? And them. Looking at that photo always left me with a sour taste in my mouth, but that wasn't the right time to get lost in memories. I had a cell phone to retrieve and an investigation to continue. The night before, I'd even been able to deactivate that paid weather service. I could finally use the phone to do what it was designed for. Making phone calls. Alright, <clears throat> I got one thing completed, right? So I still need the... Um... Oh yeah, I need the remote control, still. Wait, what is this picture of? It represented the Sacred Heart of Jesus, a Christian symbol of worship. My grandma insisted that I take it with me to America for protection, but to be honest, I always found it, um, slightly gruesome. Okay. Um, remote, remote, remote control. Okay, so where would one put remote control at? Already looked there. Trolley. What the hell was my remote control doing in there? Ah. Okay, so we got the controller, and now we can turn the TV on. The TV didn't turn on. The batteries were probably <laughs> not. dead. And the closest retailer was half an hour away by foot. Okay, so no batteries. Damn batteries. There must be some way to give you even a little boost. Okay, I could probably take the batteries out and shake them, right? Uh, it's not working. I thought it was better to look for another solution. <laughs> okay. That's not gonna work. Alright. Um, 
I got a bar. I didn't want anything from the bar. I barely drink, especially when I was working on a case. Inside that fridge, there wasn't even misery left. I had nothing to hang at the moment. And there was nothing interesting among the items already posted. Okay, so what if I do this? I thought it was better to look for another solution. Nope. Hmm. Better think about it. Ah, uh, so there was a magnet there. Can I just... It kept the device thermostat held in position. Removing it would drop the temperature as low as it could go. But, alright. I rarely ate the junk food in my fridge anyway. Okay, so now the fridge is cold, right? Obviously the fridge was empty. Obviously the fridge was... My mini fridge. Spacious enough for someone like me, who only eats at home once in a month, and the other day sneaks into wedding buffets. I read somewhere once that a dead battery could regain a slow oh, there it is. in an extremely cold environment. Could it be true, this story of batteries recharging in the cold? Hey, maybe that's what igloos are. Huge batteries shaped like houses. Oh, that would explain why Eskimos wear gloves, to prevent electric shocks. It was time to discover if my limited physics knowledge would help me or not. Okay, so now well, let's try to turn the TV on. Aha! Uh -huh. famous tycoon Eric Molsberg, where an attempted break-in was reported last night. No statement has been released either from the police or the family, so the specifics of the offense are still shrouded in mystery. The only detail that has been leaked so far is some strange graffiti drawn on the front of the mansion, probably left by the same individual or group that attempted the late night illegal entry. As you can see behind me, the symbol appears to have been applied using an enormous quantity of blood, perhaps of a human nature. We await confirmation on the origin of the liquid, with hopes that it isn't the blood of young Catherine Molesberg. Stay tuned to this network for further developments. From Gwendolyn Pratt, back to you in the newsroom. That symbol on the wall. I saw it even before that swine of a hack opened her mouth. It was identical to the seal on the letter I had just received. So that must be him. I had no doubt anymore. Blowtorch was pulling out all the stops to finish our challenge in style. I toyed with the idea of contacting Burton to bring him up to speed on the situation, but I scrapped that thought. If I could close the case myself, my superiors would be forced to reinstate me into the department. But was it really worth the risk of falling straight into a trap? Who was I kidding? I was never the kind of man to back down from a challenge, no matter how dangerous it may be. It was high time to let the world see what I was worth. I wouldn't be remembered as the detective that let one of the worst serial killers in the history of Miami slip away. Alright, so we got everything done in the notebook, which is good, so now can we go ahead and leave this place or what? Aha. Uh -huh. The thing to do next was retrieve Green Dark, just in case I needed to race off in pursuit of Ramos. My beloved bike had been left at the HPD the night before. To recover it, a long walk awaited me. Hey, Richie. How's it going? Hello, Lazarus. Richard, we've been neighbors for five years now. What do you think about finally calling me Lars? I like the sound of Lazarus. There's something magnetic about it, don't you think? Speaking of magnetism, do you still have that magnet I loaned you? Yeah, well, you know, it's complicated. What do you mean by complicated? You didn't lose it, did you? No, not lost, no, no. I used it in a secret mission. My magnet. In a secret mission. Very, very secret. So secret, I can't tell you anything about it. Well, do me a favor and get it back to me as soon as possible. It's a fond family memory. 
And that's what it would remain for poor Richard. A memory. Any good news in the mailbox? Any good news in the mailbox? Once you could find love letters inside. Now it's just bills and a mountain of advertising. Do you even read the advertisements they send you? No, I just use it to ignite the coal at the barbecues with my colleagues. See you soon, Richie. Sure, at next Sunday's residence meeting. You'll come, right? I have a previously scheduled engagement. Sorry, did I say Sunday? I meant Saturday. Even worse, I have... to attend a funeral. Oh, too bad. Then my condolences. <laughs> the only one who'd die would be me if I went to another one of those stupid meetings. Of boredom. Okay. Anything else here? Mailbox. I was sure I would find only bills and late payment warnings. Sometimes it's better not to know, so I didn't open it. What? You don't want to open your mailbox. All right. Um, try to go outside. Okay, Green Dart is at the HPD. I'm in for a long walk to retrieve it. Okay, that's my motorcycle. Okay, so HPD headquarters, that's where we need to head. And that's the only place I can go. I found a bad, very bad surprise waiting for me outside the office. There's my the motorcycle. The idiots in the department had pierced a tire of my beloved green dart. Furthermore, the bike was locked to the streetlight with its chain. We, though, probably had the keys, but for the tire, I would have to come up with something. One thing was for sure, I wouldn't leave the HPD without my green dart. All right. So what's wrong with this thing? Tire is blown. I needed green dart to move, but fixing it with my bare hands seemed impossible. I needed something to plug the breach. The hole on the tire must be fixed. Then I have to free green dart from its locked. Okay. Talk to this willow lady, or is it a guy? I think it's a hey, lady. Hey willow. Oh, it's just you. Who else would it be? A government inspector, maybe? They're everywhere these days. We are the HPD, the last place a government inspector would check. We work for justice, so we're all clean and spotless. Is that what you think? Actually, if we're talking about being clean, that doesn't really apply anymore. Listen, it's you who has the keys to Green Dart, right? Yes, the chief inspector entrusted their custody to me. Can you show me an identification document? Wilo? you don't give me the keys of my green dart right now, I'll make an exception to the rule. Okay, so is she... Is he or giving me the keys? Yes. Awesome. Hey, where did the second key come from? That's not mine. The keys were delivered to me as you see them, but if you want to fill out a complaint form... Eh, uh, I'll keep them this way. Okay, so what the hell happened to my green dart? Yeah, what that's that. What the hell happened to my green dart? The vehicle has a puncture on the front tire. Not only that, it's chained to a lamppost. Do you have any idea who perpetrated this offense? I don't have all the necessary evidence to make an assessment. Do you want to press charges? Ah, it'd be a waste of time. Instead, do you know where there's a bike shop around here so I can buy a new tire? There's one five blocks away from here, along the promenade. It took me two hours just to get here from my house. I can't afford to lose the whole day. I'll manage some other way. Have you got any spare chewing gum? Have you got any spare chewing gum? It depends. Who's asking? The President of the United States. Very funny. I might have some more, yes. Well, perfect. That's exactly what I need. Don't get any ideas. I'm done giving you things for free. Come on. Stop talking nonsense and give me some gum. Okay. Bring me the latest edition of Play Guy and maybe we can talk about it. What? I'm alone all day down here. I have to find some way to pass the time. Looks like I might have to spend the day running errands for this paranoid. On the other side of the street is a newsstand. I better hurry up if I don't want to waste too much time. Okay, so she wants or she, I'm not sure. Still don't know if it's a lady or a guy. Um, magazine, right? Play guys about this. The hole in the tire must be fixed. Get a copy of 
play guy for Willow. Then I have to free. Okay, so he says something about that. Something about the. Um, um, like a place where they sell magazines. What about the. Can I just take the sports car? A fiery red sports car. I prefer two wheeled vehicles by far, but. That one just had a certain something. Ah, there's a mag. Okay, so there's a newspaper I can buy. Probably magazines as well. Good morning, Didier. Didier? Bonjour, Detective! But he's French. You're still practicing your French, I see. Je suis really French, Detective. How many times do I have to tell you? Come on, cut the act. Just give me a copy of Play Guy, please. Do you plan to pay this time? Pay? You're particularly funny today, Didier. I cannot extend you any more credit, Detective. Your account has so many zeros that I struggle to read the total. I refuse to pay even one penny to do Willow a favor. On the other hand, Inspector Barton has left something paid for you. Seamus is really funny. Was it my fault that Ramos was a mountain of a man? That is all for now. See you soon, detective. <laughs> By the way, your fake pronunciation sucks. Okay, so... Uh, God, he gave me a magazine, but that's not the one I needed. Hey, look at that guy. <laughs> that guy looks like the uh, criminal, the uh, blowtorch. Uh, okay. So let's see what can we do. It's toolbox. If I ever had the need for those tools, I would know where to look. Okay, so let's try to give her the magazine, maybe? Let's see if this works. Here's your magazine. I asked you for a magazine with naked women. Okay. Yeah, that didn't work. That guy's sure muscles made me want to start a diet based on chicken and salads. Okay, maybe we'll have to go back and find something else. Bullets in Love. The box office smash hit movie of the recent months. The classic predictable thriller where at the end the killer turns out to be... Spoiler alert, the main character. I had a vision of me uprooting the hydrant with my bare hands and then crooning, I'm singing in the rain, under the water pressure jet. I don't know why, but I've always had a penchant for musicals. Okay. Now, oh, how do I find that magazine? I'll just give this back to him. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't see a good reason to do that. With his mother distracted, stealing the balloon and lollipop from the kid would be child's play. How low I've sunk. The sun up in the sky, a fiery red balloon and a lollipop. I would have gladly changed places with that kid. Hello. How can I help you? You're doing a really great job. You can say that again, my friend. Nobody does grout work like this these days. Listen to old Tom. That's not just a wall. It is art. If he could, that man would have exhibited his stuccoed wall in the Louvre of Paris, near the Mona Lisa. Ah, uh, is that magazine on the wall yours? Oh. Oh, there's Play Guy right there. I see it. Okay, cool. Is that magazine on the wall yours? Of course it's mine. What a question. Well, this is a very difficult situation to explain. In short, I urgently need that magazine. I understood full well what kind of urgency we're talking about. But unfortunately, <laughs> I have an urgency even greater than yours. Uh... Look at those soft curves. Those gentle shades. P please let's not get into any details. What are you suggesting my urgency is art? I need that magazine as inspiration for my walls. So I can't give it to you. Go to the newsstand and buy a copy like everyone else. Well, I 
tried to ask him politely. Now I'd have to graduate to cunningly stealing. Okay, so I gotta steal this now? It was an adult magazine. The rabbit with the glasses subtly suggested its intended purpose. That arrogant mason wouldn't let me take the magazine, but I needed it if I wanted to satisfy Willow's horrid sexual fantasies. Okay, so how do I That steal arrogant it? mason wouldn't let Um Let's think, let's think. I gotta distract him somehow, maybe? Bucket with paint. Putting it in my pocket was out of the question. I'd have sold my amazing coat. If needed, I could have used it on the spot. How many acts of vandalism could I perpetrate with a simple brush? Okay, maybe I'll throw some at it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, light it on fire? Setting fire to the paint seemed like overkill to me. Hmm. Better think about it. Okay, what, what, what is it? It was one of those fridge magnets, but a particularly big and powerful one. It was shaped like a UFO. He was getting down with that guitar. The wall had recently been stuccoed, so it definitely had more refined look compared to the rest of the building. Okay, so what if I try to replace it? Yes, I would rapidly switch the covers so that the mason wouldn't notice the disappearance of his magazine. Okay, cool. Now I felt more at ease. The cover depicted a muscled man in a military pose. Contents, though, were much more interesting. Okay, so I don't know how he did it, but he switched the covers or switched the magazines, but I love the same cover. Anyhow, that's good enough, hopefully, for this Willow dude. Here you are, you filthy pervert. But these were not the kinds of pecs I really wanted to see. Take the cover off, you idiot. Oh, now I get it. Don't get smart. Now, I want the chewing gum we agreed on. Help yourself, but make sure you're not seen. It could look like attempted bribery. Okay, what is this marker, too? Hey, Milo. Uh, do you mind if I borrow this marker for a while? What do you have to do? I don't know why precisely. I might need it eventually. I, on the contrary, may need it for work, so the answer is no. Great. Alright, so I got the gum, and <laughs> can I patch that with my tire? The chewing gum was exactly what I needed to fix the bike. Sweet! But Brady didn't stick to my gloves, or I'd have to spend half a day cleaning them. The chain remained the last obstacle to freedom, but fortunately, I had the keys with me. Alright, so, the last thing is the uh, chain. Okay, so where's the lock? Uh, I can see it, but let's just use the keys on it and see what happens. What? Are you kidding me? What clumsy hands! Oh my goodness! I had. Mm. I think I felt a twinge in my hand. Looks like he's one of his fingers smaller than and any other scored. ones. You scored. What a shot! Which physical law of the universe causes keys to inevitably fall inside the only manhole nearby? Opening the grate with bare hands was impossible. Besides, inside it seemed empty. So I imagine there must be a long drop beneath it. 
I saw no alternative. To recover the key, I would need to penetrate the sewers. But this would take time. I had already wasted too much. By then, the sun was almost setting. I decided to head out immediately, hoping not to miss the appointment. When I reached the place, the sun had already set. An old, desolate alley in West Miami. I didn't know what to expect yet. I had to move cautiously. Okay, so this is a place I was supposed to meet the dude, right? The one who sent me the letter. Vending machine? Seems sweet. like a vending machine for chewing gum, but actually it contains soft marshmallows. Damn, damn cat! A TV in bits and pieces. Boxes, empty bottles of detergent, junk. All right, what else, what else? The homeless person. Hey, are you okay? No answer. Not even a twitch or perceptible movement. Then I realized how things really were. The man wasn't breathing. Spooky. Woo, there's nobody there. Oh, it's a mannequin. What the? What is that? Lazarus Bundy. Forgive this production, but I can't be with you in person for reasons beyond my control. The young Molesburg's kidnapping is just the first piece of a complex puzzle. A plan which, if not stopped, threatens to drag all of us to our doom. I leave the responsibility in your hands, detective. Catherine Molesburg must be found, and her kidnappers brought to justice. Look for my symbol. I forced myself to interpret all this like a very bad joke. I failed. I started with the conviction to end my challenge with Ramos, and yet I found myself receiving a brand new one. The tone of that man suggested only determination, not a single trace of mockery, nor even a perceptible tremble. That guy really believed what he said. I immediately realized that he wasn't a mythomaniac. Racking my brain would have been useless, so I decided to go back home and sleep on it. Maybe the night would bring much needed insight, and the next day I'd know what to do. Alright, so on my way back home, I believe. November 12th, Lars' apartment. Okay, so this is the next day. <laughs> As was happening more and more often, I hadn't slept much, and I almost had the feeling I dreamed everything. Alright, so guys, I'm gonna call this part one. It's been an hour or so since I've been playing this. Um, I will probably play another part tonight and upload it again. Um, so make sure you guys don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you guys don't miss the next video. Thanks for sticking with me.